God doesn't care. Um, you say, well, are you trying to say that God doesn't care about people? No, no, that's not the purpose here of this study, this little walk and talk video. What I'm saying is, um, the purpose of this video is to talk about standards that people can come up with as a way to please God. And uh, God doesn't care sometimes about those standards. You see, the New Testament teaches the priesthood of the believer. And the uh, if you're a saved Christian, then you are part of the priesthood. You don't have to go to seminary or you know become a celibate or something else like that. Uh, there's no forced celibacy in the New Testament. Um, you can make yourself a eunuch for the kingdom of, of heaven's sake. Um, but that's talking mostly about a Jew that's going into the, that's in the time of Jacob's trouble, heading into the millennial kingdom, and saying, you know, the Bible talks about woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, because it's going to be very rough. So you'd be better off just staying single. It's not saying that uh, saved people, that there should be some kind of a holy priesthood or something and where the they're celibate and uh, you know they don't get married and they don't bear children but they fornicate secretly and bear children that way or sodomites or something like that that's not God's system that's the papal system but um, what I'm trying to say is uh, there are things that you can give up things that you can do as a way to um, offer up spiritual sacrifices unto the Lord and I will list a bunch of those when I first got saved I had a lot of uh, very wicked music in my collection and I had um, uh, movies and things like that Hollywood movies and um, I got rid of that stuff you say oh did you make some good money no I burned it I got rid of it I offered up a spiritual sacrifice unto the Lord. And then I uh, I wanted to please the Lord in everything I could possibly do. And so I thought, well, I should probably go to church again. So I started going to uh, different churches and things and ended up with the Baptist church because I thought that they were, they all believed the King James Bible was God's perfect book, you know, and boy, was I wrong on that one. Um, Baptist churches, uh, a lot of them, they don't believe the King James Bible for one minute. Um, all of them do not follow the King James Bible. I can say that 100% of the time, they don't follow the King James Bible. Um, they follow the traditions of men. Uh, there are no church buildings in the New Testament. But, you know, I didn't know, like a lot of you didn't know, or maybe don't know about it. Maybe you've never considered it. And... Um, so, you know, here I am, uh, suit and tie. I didn't want to give up my beard. I didn't see any scripture for that, so I had enough sense to keep my beard, but I had, you know, you see the early videos of me and my beard's real, real thin and, you know, trimmed perfectly and everything. And, uh, you know, that's what I did because I thought that that was pleasing to God. And, um, you know, I remember the one guy, Hiles Anderson guy, and he was talking about, you know, people that dress like heathens. You know, never occurred to him that uh, heathens wear suits and ties too. But <laughs> uh, let's not be confused by facts here. Um, and so, you know, he talks about going out and seeing Christians out in, in town and they're dressed like the heathen. You know, and, and I was around Baptists and they would, you know, if you wear jeans, you're backslidden. Blue jeans, you know. You can wear khaki pants and you can wear other types of dress pants, but jeans are, I don't know, maybe black jeans would be okay, but, you know, and if it's a church function that, whatever, if you're working, if you have a construction job, maybe black jeans are, are all right, but uh, other than that, you know, I'm not joking. And uh, wire rim glasses are worldly and of the devil, and, and uh, you know, you should always wear a black suit with a white shirt and a black tie. Hmm, kind of a Masonic thing there, I think, but let's not get into that. I'm just forging my way through my property here over to another trail. Just right over here. Um, well, that's interesting. Find uh, things occasionally on the property here. 
Huh. Let me show you this. Bring this in here. I'll get back to the video in a minute. It's been back here for a while. That's stores or something. I don't know what that is. But there's some stuff there. There's a there's another glass jar down there. Another glass jar back there. Looks like there was a we found different things back in here over the years. So, very interesting. I want to show you an herb actually out here that's very good for uh, pain medicine. Um, right down there, Indian pipe or ghost pipe, you can call it either one, but it looks like some kind of mushroom, but it's actually an herb. And what you can do with that is you can make a uh, tincture with high proof alcohol and it draws out the constituent constituents of the uh, pain relief there and it, those little ghost pipes there they're white but they'll make a purple liquid which is really strange like a dark purple liquid um, and it's really good for pain medicine um, you don't use a lot of it obviously because you don't want to just you know use a lot of alcohol or something but that's something that you can do not very difficult and it's you know really good for pain um, you can also get it online, different people make it. Uh, but getting back to the study here, my little study. Um, so I had all these standards and I was uh, just, you know, thinking that I was just su super righteous and, and I'd have all this power and, you know, things would be going good. And it seemed to be for a while, but then it was kind of as if the Lord said, all right, that's time to grow up, Ryan. It's time for you to come out of these traditions of men. And uh, back out here to the trail again. As you can see over here, there's our one of our trails. And now I get the deer flies flying everywhere. Uh, nice. But so I had these standards. And the Lord started to say, but are they in Scripture? Well, Lord, I, you know, they have to be because all these people have done them over the years. The Lord says, yeah, that doesn't prove anything. Hmm. You know, if it's not in Scripture, is it really pleasing to God? And you know what I found out? I found out that God didn't care about my standards. He didn't. God wanted me to step out boldly in faith and uh, abandon those unscriptural standards and see what happens. So I did. And I abandoned those standards. I met my wife and, and uh, still had my trimmed beard and everything, you know, and we got to talking the one night and I was showing her some old pictures, you know, where I had my beard longer like this. It wasn't gray back in those years, but uh, um, sorry about the sound of the deer flies flying around. But she said, actually, I'd prefer it if you had a longer beard. Really? You wouldn't, you're not offended by that or anything? No. Okay. That's why I have a long beard. Because my wife prefers it that way. Um, um, and you'll understand that if you're married. Um, you know, that there are responsibilities within marriage to be attractive to the other. And um, so, my wife likes a long beard on me, then I'll wear a long beard. If she finds that attractive, then good. I don't really care what other people think. And um, so then I got into the conspiracy world and I started to study things there and I started to realize, you know, uh, hearing all this different stuff, these guys, the former Illuminati and all these other things. And, um, oh, this guy here, he was raised in the Illuminati and, and he knows about holidays and these holidays are occult rituals and all this other stuff. And, oh, I didn't know that. I probably should you know, not do these holidays then. And um, so for a year I was anti-Christmas and anti-anything holiday wise. And, and I thought, boy, this is really going to propel me forward in my walk with the Lord. But you know what? It didn't. In fact, uh, I was con confronted on that with the scriptures and shown that um, actually 
that's an issue of liberty. Hmm, plainly spelled out in scripture. And a lot of the insider Illuminati stuff that I was told was actually a lie. Uh, Jeremiah chapter, what is it, 10, I think. Oh, it's a description of a Christmas tree. No, it's actually a description of a carved wooden idol. Um, decked with gold means overlaid with gold, not uh, with tinsel that you get from Walmart. All right. Um, and the fact is, God doesn't care what you do about holidays. He doesn't care. God is not super impressed by you because you're giving up the holidays and you're giving up this and you're giving up a... And you know what I started to discover? I started to discover that I was getting into a movement where my standards were not supported by scripture and my standards were actually overtaking the scriptures. And I thought, well then how could I attack the Catholic Church and say, you know, say negative things against the Catholics when I'm doing my own version of this? A Protestant version of Roman Catholicism. Um, I'm a Bible believer. Are you really? Where are all these standards at? They're not in the scriptures. Oh, well, you see, um, uh, and Lord started to convict me and said, uh, you need to get rid of that. And a uh, young person out there, that you just got saved and whatever, um, you're going to have to spend your life offering up spiritual sacrifices unto the Lord. And um, certainly give up things that you feel conviction about. But ultimately, you're going to have to say, okay, is this God's standard or is this my standard? Is this something that the Lord wants me to truly give up or does the Lord just not care? Um, and, uh, you know, there's things that you can get into. Another big one that's been a real point of contention is the flat earth issue. And yet there's people that have left this ministry. They don't support this ministry anymore. And because I don't teach a flat earth, and it's become a point of contention. Why? Where's it at in scripture? Where did anybody fight about it in scripture? About the, you know, and you say, well, they all believed in flat earth. Okay, let's go with that as a theory. Um, where was there any other contentions about uh, other things, you know, scientific type of things or whatever? Uh, you know, I'm trying to think of one, you know, like your diet or something like that, or where people should live, where Christians should live, what Christians should do for a living and whatever else. Where was the contention? Contention is actually spoken against. See, what you have to understand is we are all part of the body of Christ, but we don't all have the same job, the same area that we live in. Um, <clears throat> First Corinthians chapters 12 through, through 14 talk about this. And you can't say, okay, I am part of the legs of, of the Lord. Uh, the legs can't say to the arms, what are you doing? That, you know, the eye can't say to the ear, what are you doing? That kind of a thing there. Um, we all have different jobs. We all have different uh, things that we're on. The, the narrow path, we're all at different parts on that path. And you know what? Um, <clears throat> there's, there could be something about alcohol or whatever else that... The Lord could have me help somebody on that issue or whatever because I'm not tempted by it. Or the Lord might say, hey, you know what? Um, you've never been through it. You don't know what it's like to be an alcoholic and recovering from that. So just be quiet, Brian. Okay, you know. Um, my point is, brethren, don't make a big issue of something where you're, where you're at. All right, we're not supposed to uh, make problems and things on that and, and judge other brethren based on uh, spiritual sacrifices that we ourselves are making. And of course, the scriptures are very clear about certain things that we're supposed to give up. Um, you know, I'll give you another example. Um, the issue of food. Um, you know, for a while I was a fanatic for, you know, it had to be organic, it had to be heirloom, it had to be whatever. And then I started to realize that some of you were actually telling me about this. You said uh, you need to check into the thing of the certified organic. Certified organic is still a government standard. Hmm. <laughs> In other words, for a farm to be certified organic, they have to pass certain government standards. I'm thinking, wait a second. <laughs> and there are certain farms that 
they know how to, you know, sort of do things to still get the certified organic stamp, but they're actually not certif certified organic. You know, how much, you know, fertilizer can we use? How much uh, pesticide can we use and still be considered certified organic? Hmm. And so I started to realize, you know, a lot of the organic food that I'm paying a lot more for, um, unless I really know the history of it or whatever else, it's not actually organic. It's not actually any better than the stuff I could get from a local farm. Hmm. And uh, maybe I should just say, Lord, I just need to pray for this food and, you know, do my best and, and whatever, not get so hung up on this stuff. And so we try to be in as good as, of health as possible. Uh, you know, I come out here and I hike. Usually like to take a walk every morning. And um, we go hiking up mountains and hiking in different places and whatever. Um, try to stay in good shape and you know do your best to stay in good shape but it's not possible on this earth to be in perfect shape it just isn't might have been in the past but right now not so much so um, again it's the walk of, of sanctification hope you understand what I'm saying by all of this um, bug away from me. Okay, so we're going to go to, looking at my notes here, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Yeah. Ah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to read a very important portion of scripture. I know one of you brought this point up the one time and it was such a good point. So I'm trying to turn here in my little miniature Bible. All right, here we have it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. I don't have a lot of great wisdom sometimes, or excellency of speech. But look at verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hmm. Oh, no, brother, we're supposed to argue about the shape of the earth. No, we're not. We're supposed to argue over holidays. No, we're not. We're supposed to argue over the different types of foods that we eat and the different types of ways that we dress and whether you go to church or not. Or No, we're not supposed to do that. We're not. Um, verse 3. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech... And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Um, your faith should not come from some guy that can really preach well and really is moving and whatever else and, and things. Uh, no, your, your faith and your, your uh, walk with the Lord should come from those spiritual sacrifices that you make. And, you know, you will, at some point in time, you will get knocked off course. I will tell you that right now. I've been knocked off course different times, get involved in movements that I shouldn't have gotten involved in, and start doing things that I think are pleasing to the Lord, and the Lord just doesn't care about them. It doesn't bring me any spiritual power. It doesn't help me out in my walk with the Lord or anything else. And you have to lower your pride sometimes and say, you know what? I was wrong to get into that, and I'm sorry, Lord. Please, Lord, get me back on track. Um, I'm not talking about leaving the Lord. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking about Christians that backslide and go back to the world and whatever. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is you get involved in movements that God just simply doesn't care about. Show you another little flower here. You can see these. This is spotted knapweed here. Right there. So, I like to look at the flowers and things and kill mosquitoes as they're on my camera. <laughs> but, um, brethren, don't get sidetracked. Okay. Stand by the Word of God. Stand by the Scriptures. The Scriptures will not let you fail. And um, don't argue over stupid things. Okay. Uh, you say, well, what about the timing of the rapture? That's not a stupid thing. That's Bible doctrine. 
and it's very clear that we are supposed to stand for the you know resurrection of the saints um, that is an important issue what about the bible version issue again very important um, what about this issue of church buildings um, let me just state it again all right uh, people want to meet together in some building and whatever else. I don't have a problem with that. I have no problem with people fellowshipping together. I think it's a wonderful, beautiful thing. But what I'm saying is, I've seen it. It always goes carnal, okay? Well, I shouldn't say always. Every one that I've ever experienced, it goes carnal. Say it that way. There could be some amazing place out there somewhere where it's not carnal and the people are just on fire for the Lord and they don't come together and talk about the weather and sports and politics and you know, hunting and fishing and whatever, you know, trucks and the worldly stuff. Um, maybe there's some church building out there where the people are just really doing great things. I don't know. But most I've seen, it gets very worldly. It gets very carnal. Um, but I don't care. You know, people want to meet together in a building. Okay, fine. Meet together in your building. The problem that I have seen over the years is that it creates a double life. That's why I'm against church buildings. It's the, the life that you live when you are in church and the life that you, that you leave, lead when you are not in church. That's the danger of this whole thing. Um, and what happens is, if you get really strict, you get a bunch of Christians together, you say, we need to bring, you know, have some rules and some standards so that things just don't fall apart. And then you, you know, um, we require suits and ties here. We require uh, whatever. You know, the men have to have their hair cut an inch. The back has to be an inch above the collar of your shirt. Um, we can't, no beards, you know. I mean, I've, I've literally been rebuked from the pulpit because I had a beard going to different Baptist churches. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're going to get real far with me on that one. Um, you know, when you go out door to door, you need to be clean shaven. And, you know, and then they look back at me, oh, you know, and I understand certain brethren don't or whatever, but, you know, but I really think it's the best thing and I, I think it's you know, most pleasing to God and whatever else. Yeah, but, uh, and, and, you know, oh, you've been hurt and whatever. Stop that stuff. I, I don't care. People can say what they want, but um, it's not scripture. So, uh, hopefully that makes some sense. And, um, I just want to challenge you, don't get caught up in standards that are unscriptural. Don't get caught up in, and uh, find yourself, all of a sudden it's all your standards that matter and whatever else. Um, I mean, I've had some rough looking people and they come up to me and they say, hey, uh, you're, you're Brian Denlinger, aren't you? And I say, yes I am. And they'll say, I watch your videos. And I say, praise the Lord, that's great. And, you know, I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, hmm, I don't know, you know, maybe, I don't, you know, I have no idea where they're at with the Lord. They could have just started watching. They might not be saved yet. They, there could be other issues. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, you know, if they ask me to judge them, well, I can, you know, say, well, I need to know a little bit more here before I can judge properly. Uh, I don't know. But, um point of the video to end it here is um, just uh, be careful that your standards don't overtake the scriptures okay because your standards if they're not in line with the Bible then I can tell you God doesn't care and uh, try try things you know offer up spiritual sacrifices unto the Lord Lord you want this out of my life okay here it is I'll put it on the altar I'll get rid of it I'll walk away from it if you're not pleased by that you know Lord if you're not pleased by me uh, if it's not good for my health to eat ice cream, then I'll get rid of ice cream. Um, if it's not good for me to wear this type of uh, clothing or this type of that, offer that stuff up to the Lord. But if you see that he doesn't care, um, if you don't see any kind of spiritual power or, or anything else, um, then don't waste your time on it. Don't take a big stand on it. Um, and that's all I have to say about that matter. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.